Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Corey. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight we're going to be on and off road. It's one of those episodes. We, mm-hmm. we like them. Uh, I'm in the Midwest still. Ross is in the Northeast, and Corey's in East Texas, which is like Midwest adjacent, but not. <laughs> I mean, we're close to everything around here. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the same time zone, but you're definitely not Midwest. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, man. <laughs> You're the South. All right. No, you're Texas. Texas doesn't even qualify as the South to me. Yeah, like that we, is you're your own entity. We yeah. are our own thing. Um, speaking of not the Midwest, Ross, you took a trip in the very opposite direction. Yeah, the complete opposite direction <laughs> to the very, very Northeast. And I won't go too deep into this because we, my dad, brother, and I recorded an entire show. Uh, from our beer-ridden state uh, after our Saturday ride up in New Hampshire and also technically Maine. Um, So backing up, set the stage, uh, we do a couple big ATV, UTV rides in New Hampshire every year. Uh, This past weekend was one of them. And I drove the Tundra TRD Pro up there with the the Polaris uh, Scrambler XP1000S in the back of it. So I did about a 700 ish miles are on the clock of the tundra i think i did probably 675 with the quad in the back and it's an interesting truck um i i think so many people ragged on it when it first came out because the quality was meh and you know boo hiss v8 went away <laughs> but you know for the purposes that i use it for you know to haul a, a quad a long distance and to you know, be able to get up and down questionable driveways um, in the rain and whatnot. It, it was great. I mean, it was comfortable. It's uh, it's that twin turbo iForce Max V6, you know, with the hybrid, the um, tiny little 1.87 kilowatt hour battery. But it's 437 horsepower, 583 pound feet of torque, and it, it, it's not slow. I'll say that it's it's heavy, and you feel it. But you know, in uh, on the highway, it's it's just it's just a highway monster. Um, it's it's a good truck. I was impressed. I'm, I was pleasantly surprised. I again, so many of the magazines just dumped on it because they, you know, the the early ones weren't good. Um, but the one that I tested was great. It was flawless. You know, there's some aspects that aren't on par with the others. You know, like the batteries under the back seat, so you don't get a flat load floor. So I picked up my, you know, huge toolbox to put it in and kind of had to like move the passenger seat as far forward as it would go. So it could fit between the battery and the seat on the floor because I didn't want to put like, you know, 70 pound toolbox on there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good truck. I think they're going to sell a fuck ton of them because of the way it looks and it has a built in factory light bar, as we all know. Did you get it to work? I did. You have to turn the brights on. Is that yeah. what it is? Like That's four-wheel what it drive is. too, right? No, no. It it worked in two. I never actually put this thing in four-wheel drive. <laughs> it's got a rear locker and I didn't even touch it. Yeah. But yeah, no, you just gotta flip it in, uh flip the brights on. Oh. Ah. Yeah. I wish I and had known a, that. It's a pretty weak light bar. They definitely had like some regulations to abide by when they put it on there. But yeah, the tundra's good. I, I what think do you think that, that fake engine noise on the inside? Um, I mean, it didn't bother me that much because a, a V6 never sounds good anyways. And a turbo <laughs> charge force induction V6 also never sounds good. You know, like look at the, the, you know, GTR, like it just, it's not, it's not like an emotional, exciting, visceral sound. It's just, bleh. <laughs> you know, so. The fake V8 noise didn't bother me that much. In all fairness, too, I also had, you know, music and podcast crank way up, um, which it is worth saying the JBL stereo is not great. It's not great in any of the Toyotas, the Forerunner, the, any of the JBL. It's just not a great stereo. But, you know, I, I think more than the stereo, people are going to have a problem with the bright red interior, which is the only option. And uh, pretty red. It's. Yeah, it's it's you can see it from space. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. 
but yeah, good truck. Uh, 72 grand or so as tested. Um, you know, I, I did almost effectively the exact same trip with the Raptor R a couple months ago. And obviously the Raptor was roughly $40,000 more expensive. But the Tundra actually, powertrain aside, the chassis and suspension tuning actually felt less upset by a thousand pounds of ATV in the back, which was interesting, but also, you know, the Tundra and the Raptor are, the Raptor are at least are by no means competitors. So yeah. not really apples to uh, apples here, but yeah. Um, more about that trip on last week's show. And <laughs> just looking at my notes so I can check the boxes. Yeah. We, we did 125 miles on our Saturday ride. On, wow. uh, on the ATVs. And we could have done more, but we just like ran out of time. It was just getting dark. And uh, I think everybody was happy that their machines lived after what happened on Friday. Um, and yeah, just why, why Chris? I, I didn't listen to the show. Oh, I, oh, I wasn't on it. Oh, so what happened Friday? I, uh, <laughs> we, we got up there. We went straight to the trailhead. We unloaded half a mile from the parking lot my brother's can-am his 2016 maverick uh threw a check engine light and went into limp mode and was running on one cylinder and thankfully the can-am dealer that just happened to be right up the road took us in and like the greatest technician in the world diagnosed his uh his what turned out to be a misfire and, and actual no the front of the two cylinders wasn't getting any anything because the spark plug had decided to no longer provide spark so you know tore the thing apart replaced the plugs and we were back on the trail in an hour it was Wait. fantastic yeah so we, we didn't push our luck on saturday um but yeah that scrambler that you just showed a picture of man i yep. i've ridden a lot of quads in my days and this thing just impresses me over and over again it's uh it's you know, it's 55 inches wide. And I, can't, I know how, like, people who don't ride ATVs don't get that as a reference point. Um, but the standard ATV width for something over 650 cc's is 48 inches. And in some rare cases, 49 or 50. This is the only one that's 55. And it just, it makes an enormous difference in stability and confidence and quartering. And especially up in like New Hampshire, where you know you're running reasonably high speeds for extended periods of time, um, but it, it's just it's the best. This thing is just the fucking best. So that's it. More on that trip on the in last last week's show, last week's shit show. <laughs> Chris, yeah, turn. I wasn't there. Yeah. I wasn't there, so I'm not going to call it shit show. So that's hey. not that's not nice. <laughs> let's uh, let's make some calls and and get you lined up with a machine. You can come up with us next year. So I think far we're, away. I know. I think we're done with the uh, the big rides up north for the year. So start making some phone calls and try to get yeah, you. Yeah, that's far uh, enough north that like fall shows up way sooner than. Oh yeah, the leaves were like changing. There was still a eighty degrees away. here. Yeah, I'm still waiting on it. It's eighty degrees outside right now. Eighty two degrees. Yeah, yeah. there so, was a yeah. frost <laughs> warning the first night I was in New Hampshire. I'm like, it's a yeah. very different world. Uh, I, I actually, will say though, like it. It has made the uh, fall sports, fall youth sports evening things much chiller than they like. Normally, it's like bring a jacket, and now it's like, yeah, maybe a pullover. Like, not even. Just kind of nice, especially if you're playing baseball. Don't get that sting on the metal bat. Right. Yeah. Fall ball's been still like late summer ball, not fall yep. ball. Like, <laughs> and we we played a few games here in uh, in the snow. It was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, Anyways. that's not a thing I want to do ever. Um, <laughs> literally, I I am planning a trip. We're, we are starting to discuss this. Uh, I may not have told all the people who are going yet that are involved that mm -hmm. we're going to do it, but um, we'll, we'll let them know. We'll, we'll, invites will be extended when the time is right, but that's literally my – it's just driving between youth sporting events. So I think this West. weekend there are one, two, three, four games in one day for three Jesus. kids. And then the Sunday will then 
it'll be the extent one kid will only be active on Sunday, but it, the potential of two to three games again. Oh, so, yeah. So it when is the dead, right? potential trip. <laughs> Sleep when you're dead. <laughs> yeah, is, uh, it's my is fault. The, is the potential trip west or northwest? I don't know yet. It might even be southeast or dead south. Really? Southwest. Hmm. Yeah, it's maybe north. Like I, I got some some things I'm rolling through. So come northeast, we'll, dude. Uh, no, I'm not going that far away. It's going to be a weekend. <laughs> hey, these <laughs> Texas, we got plenty of trails down here. So. Right, and mm. like I feel like I haven't done Texas enough because there's like within eight hours of me, numerous adventure parks, and I know we were discussing earlier about a two hour out and back in a day, like eight <laughs> hours, like on a. Friday and back on a Sunday, like you get one day of fun, it's but like, day. yeah, it's still a day. Like it's kind of what we do, but you know, yeah. Oh, speaking of uh, of trips, I have a suburban coming on Thursday, so you and I can share suburban notes. The like a new one? Yes. Oh, okay. Country. Good luck with that. Yeah. Good luck. Park. She's, I'm she's, gonna... she's called a cross country. What? Did you say a cross country or a high country? I didn't say either. I don't know what it is. It's a oh, cross country. It sounded like you said yeah. cross country. I was like, homie, that's a Volvo. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> the new suburban cross country. No, I'm, it's going to be funny. I'm going to have to do the Austin Powers to uh, get out of the parking spaces at my daughter's daycare. Because so. <laughs> you don't live in truck country. <laughs> <laughs> God, no. Yeah, they, so, they build there parking are... spaces here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there are a couple of places where I've been in the parking lot and been like, they didn't ask anybody in the Midwest to design this because this is mm-hmm. not appropriate. Like, it right. is awkward. Well, cars have gotten bigger and people want to fit more spaces in the same amount of space so they can make more money. Yep. America. Anyways. So, Corey's driven lots of stuff. Let's talk to him. Corey's. Why, why doesn't Corey <laughs> introduce himself and give us a little background on who he is and how he got to where he is? So, uh, elevator pitch. Let's see what, what can I get here? So, uh, I run my own channel called GT garage shock started off as a podcast that has kind of moved further back as I've started getting press vehicles because let's face it. That's where the fun is, right? You get to drive something new. Every <laughs> I wouldn't know confirm. all the press vehicles for us go to the East coast. Mm, yeah. And <laughs> or, or West. like, uh, again, I'm two hours east of where all of them are for texas so uh, i'm close right. and uh yeah so um i i have started in the last two years doing not only i'll do a single review where i give all the specs and gearhead stuff just myself the nerd, and nerdism. then I, yes yes absolutely i t- talk horsepower and torque and acceleration and approach angle and all that fun stuff and then I'll do one where uh, I bring my wife, put her behind the wheel without telling her anything about the vehicle. My five-year-old nice, that's old a great son. Idea. I know, right? Uh, my five-year-old son goes in the back seat, and I install his car seat and do all the work uh, to see what goes into putting a car seat in, in vehicles. Mm-hmm. And, God, what a pain uh, in the ass just, that is, man. Uh, and <sighs> sometimes I do it multiple times in one day, and I, I have learned. When the vehicle shows up, have the camera ready, install it once and be done. <laughs> uh, because pickup yep. trucks are not fun. Uh, that Tundra that you oh, just God, got out of, no. you had to fold the back seat forward, get it, the top tether in, tighten it up, do this whole weird song and dance with the back. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's not fun. No. Yeah. Uh, I, I gave that I got, one I nearly got... settling rail ratings on that one. I was, I was, uh, <laughs> I got 10 pounds it. left on my daughter before she outgrows the latch system. And I'm milking that for every day. That it's worth. <laughs> my, my boy's like, he's on the cusp. He's the right yeah. height. He's within a pound, but it, it's really questionable. Like he, yeah, he, not, he not can chance to no longer. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm always in stuff. And then when I get something really fun, off-road capable, I have got really strong connections with an off-road park about an hour's drive away from here. And I just go, I I have free reign, basically. That's awesome. uh, She tells me, don't get stuck and mention my park in your video. So Barnwell Mountain Recreation Area, if you're anywhere near East Texas, 
is the place <laughs> to go. That's awesome. So how did you get started in this whole thing? You mentioned before we started recording that you were in, in the corporate world as, uh, as some of us yeah. on the show. So uh, I <laughs> left college, walked straight into a, a corporate job analyzing grocery sales and trying to see how we could sell more groceries. But since mm-hmm. I was nine years old, I loved cars and I just got back from Detroit. I toured GM headquarters. And if you would have told me at 15 years old that I was going to work there someday, I would have believed you because that, that was the goal at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm from Texas and I don't like the cold (laughs) in Michigan. (laughs) So that was really like never really an option for me. They and... literally moved when the auto <laughs> is because of how shitty the weather is that time yes, of year. Yes. So uh, <laughs> basically, as college was wrapping up, I was like, that's not where I'm going to be in life. And I resided myself to the fact that I was going to be in the corporate world doing whatever I could. And uh, it just got to a point. I saw enough people doing YouTube stuff that I was like, I could do this. So. I did Mm -hmm. and uh, started in the worst possible year to start your own company in January of 2020, believe it or not, is when I decided, you know what, let's let's do something crazy. (laughs) And I believe it was going into Memorial Day of 2021 that I officially said, I'm not coming back to the office when they wanted us to come back to the office. (laughs) No. Yeah. I, I, I'm 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 good. I got my own thing. So, yeah. Now I'm the uh, treasurer and board secretary for Texas Auto Riders. I'm a member of MAMA, which is Midwest Automotive Media. And uh, favorite. Yes, yes. <laughs> that that was one heck of an event that I went to earlier this year. That was my first MAMA event, and looking forward to gotta get to one of these things for sure. And as a Talbo member. Me- I've got uh, a truck rodeo coming up uh, this week, so I'll be off-roading in, in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Truck rodeo is a, such a funny phrase. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, make force me next year to come to the Mama event. Have, you know. We, we got to get you on it for, or like in it first, and then, yes, yeah. we can do that. So. Yes, I can make that. There's some dues involved and things. Like, yeah. you can, everything is achievable. Like, just talk. We gotta talk to Robbie. Like, I'll talk can, to Robbie. We'll get you hooked up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll make it happen. Cool. So, Corey. So, uh, so you're officially now in the uh, the YouTuber world, huh? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you, it's more work than true, I yeah. thought before I jumped into it. I was like, "Holy cow!" Like, you know, it's you get to drive stuff and video it and put it on the internet, and that's it, right? But, yeah. Just there's... every day for the rest of your life. Just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Feed the beast. Do not stop. Right. Uh, yes. So shit. We just recorded uh, with um. Oh, God, slipping my mind. Shit. I'm a horrible person. He's gonna. <laughs> well, he's I'm old. Trying to figure out who you talk about. He's old. No, he was also at the Mama event. It was Zach. Zach Pradle. Zach. Oh my God. My brain <laughs> that was like freaking... six weeks ago. Oh, my brain is. Oh, I am sorry, Zach. <laughs> I need to spend less time doing things that don't matter. Anyways, um, yeah, the, the hustle is is something. The hustle real. is real for you, dude. Yeah, and, and they don't let you quit. If, if you do, you see the effects immediately. So mm-hmm. uh, when you're in it, you're in it. But luckily, like I said, I, I've had something new in the driveway practically every week of the year. For a while there, I was getting two at a time. And oh, when that, that quit, I was like... Whew, a break. Okay. I yeah. can breathe again. Just one. Yeah. <laughs> I have two right now, yeah. and I'm like, I just don't even know. There's not enough time. Yeah. Uh, technically, I've got two, but one of them is my first ever uh, Polaris. It's a oh, um, it's Polaris like Ranger, actually. Oh, it's okay. the Texas okay. edition Ranger. So. I okay. really don't know what I'm getting into in this world, but uh, very hey. much looking forward to taking that one out to Barnwell. 
and having some fun with Ask it. Ask away. I, I, I'm, I'm your UTV yeah. resource. Yes. For, uh, I heard they're tippy. If you had any questions. Yeah. So the Ranger is more utility and work focused yeah. than, say, a Razor. Um, yeah. Don't go into a corner hot and just crank on the wheel. <laughs> It will not be a good time. You'll... That is not typically my MO. It, it has only been as of recently yeah. with the Raptor R that I'm like, ooh, this is fun. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we have slow Ranger... motion video of me drifting the Raptor R in some sand. And God bless my cameraman. He's got some cojones of steel. He is like, I am coming barreling straight for him uh, <laughs> in slow motion. But you can see I'm cranking the wheel. I'm like, he didn't flinch. He didn't move. He didn't nothing. Um, so uh, yep. always good to have. He either camera. hopes you have really good insurance or that you're as good a driver as you say you are. Uh, he's got really good insurance. <laughs> and that's all I'm <laughs> His family yeah, will be the, so. Mental waiver on that one was good. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, let's back up before we get into the press car stuff. What, um. What's in your personal garage? Not anything extremely exciting. So um, currently I drive and have for the past 11 years a 2013 Chevy Cruze Eco with a six-speed manual. Okay. It is like the unicorn of unicorns uh, yeah, for playing dad cars. <laughs> deceptively good commuter cars, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, forget about I've heard those things. stories from other people with them. I've had some. Look, I've owned GM vehicles since I started driving, um, so it's been a minute. Mm -hmm. And this has probably been one of my least like maintenance cost vehicles. Uh, I've had. Hmm. Nice. I know we had to drop the engine for something, and they swapped the clutch while they had it all apart. But other than that, like it's been oil changes and nothing else um cool <laughs> that's good to hear what makes the eco eco is they like cut the weight out of everything they remove the right. um rear seat armrest because it's weight they put lighter wheels on it because of weight <laughs> so like all the racer eco things that you would do to a car yeah. <laughs> they did to that car and i'm like maybe i need to put a bigger turbo on it or oh, like god <laughs> That's what the slipperiest of slippery slopes. A little bit more. But, Jesus. Uh, yeah. You lotusified then, your your cruise. <laughs> that's yes. funny. Which, is that the 1.4 or 1.6? 1.4. Mm -hmm. okay. um, like, no power. But, uh, you know, yeah. it, it gets 40 plus MPG on the way to Dallas and back. And no hybrid batteries to worry about. No nothing. Like, it truly has been a lifesaver. And considering the vehicle I traded down from, which was a, a 45th anniversary Camaro SS. Ooh. Um, oh. it definitely has, uh, mm, yeah, it definitely has more space and more fuel efficiency for that. So, <laughs> <laughs> What color is yours? They made a diesel cruise, right? They did. They did. And I was this close to buying one. Uh, but... It it started as a 2014 model and mine is a 2013, so it was gotcha. not yet available. I wonder. <laughs> it's the most <laughs> innocuous car ever. Like it just doesn't. You'd never look at it. I don't I've think I've a, ever even seen one. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, I, the GM of the hall of the Buick GMC dealership here in town, Monty Hall. Uh, he came out and he was talking he's like is this your cruise and i was like yeah he's like what is a car guy driving the most vanilla car in the whole world doing i'm like look why am i gonna go get a car payment when i've got something brand new every week and he's like fair point yeah like, oh don't like, fuck don't, oh, don't remind me <laughs> god make me hate myself <laughs> okay then, you, don't have, you don't have a car every week ross like yeah, yeah. but i also have a car payment which is yeah uh, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, we after we got married, my wife was driving a 2010 Mini Cooper, which I called that thing the lawnmower. Uh, I was not a fan. And we traded that in before starting a family and got a 2014 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, 
which okay when i saw that on the used market i was like no way she's gonna go for this and she liked the color <laughs> and before you knew it we had it and uh, i've Actually, taken it off her a few times without permission but uh it is what it is <laughs> <laughs> where does mud come from i, I must have driven <laughs> through like a yeah. is it a red one the uh, Trailhawk, no, it's the, gosh, what they call it? Like it, rhino gray. It, it's like this, it's the color of, well, you can't see because I've got the wood wall behind me. It's the color of all the other walls in the room that I'm sitting in right now. It's a blue gray kind of okay. anvil. It was either anvil or rhino clear coat. They, yep. Jeep had weird names. Like that. Jeep always has weird names. Uh, loading. Loading. Yes, that is. Oh, wait, loose. That yeah. is our vehicle okay. right there. <laughs> so, um, it even looks like there's East it, Texas behind it. It, it and it does. <laughs> I pulled up next to the head of Jeep oh, brand yeah. marketing in that thing after sharing an elevator ride with him, uh, Scott Talon. And uh, yeah, we know Scott. Yeah, Scott's been on good, our show. Had a good chat with him. Uh, I he rode shotgun with me in a four by e and. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did not have good spotters, so there was a lot of scraping oh, no. involved. The 392 not behind good. me that was being driven by my co-host uh, almost got stuck again for bad spotters. Scott was pissed. He he got out and he started doing the spotting. Was, seriously, he was done. That, that <laughs> is was very this? off brand. Yeah. yeah, was this in in Utah? No. No, it was in uh, just outside of Austin, Texas. And um, God. yeah, I, I, I was highly disappointed with the spotters of the that event that year. Uh, we have not asked some people that. that know what they're doing. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I think they were Jeep Jamboree people, which, like I said, like, off brand. Like it, and they're, it, it, they're normally very good. Normally very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know what happened, but uh, I do remember I even got out and was watching the 392 try and find its way over the boulders that we were traversing. Oh, but, and I, I love that thing so much. So much. Know, I, what how many weeks ago was that? <laughs> oh, God. Time doesn't have any relevance when I dream about that thing every day. Oh, it was probably a month ago. <laughs> What people don't understand is like the 392 exists because the 4xe exists and is, they like to tout this, the most popular plug-in hybrid in America. Yep. And uh, I was at the Detroit show when everybody was holding their breath uh, for a 4xe or, and or 392 Gladiator and we got neither. Yeah. And Sad. it's just because sales on that thing are just struggling too much. Dude. But I was Jim Morrison like left me news. hanging. Yeah, he he left us hanging. There were a couple times where I'm like, he kind of paused. I was like, uh, uh, and then yeah. no, he, uh, it was, it was frustrating. I was like, please break some real news here, but uh, minor tweaks for Harper. 24. Yeah, yeah. If if they had um, if they had put the 392 in the Gladiator in the same update. With the new screen and the side airbags and power seats and all that stuff, I'd be taking a second mortgage out. Yeah. Uh, so we were just out at Barnwell in the GMC Canyon, and there was a dude with Louisiana plates in his heavily modified Gladiator. Uh, I, I, oof, I wish I had <laughs> some sort of footage or something to share. Like this thing was ridiculous. He said he went to a dealership and they offered him a hundred grand, and I started laughing. I was like, "No way would I take a hundred grand what? for the build on it?" It was a. It was riding on forties. Uh, he's about to. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! Uh, he's about to uh, swap a three ninety two in it, and he's already got it picked oh, wow. out. It's from a total charger, and yeah, like it is a beast. And we made the mistake. One hundred fifty thousand dollars gladiator. Yeah, we made the mistake of agreeing to, you know, go out explore the uh, trails with him. Uh, I'm in a stock midsize GM truck without skids, <laughs> and mm -hmm. he is in a built Jeep that can just oh, walk God. over everything. 
as he's drinking yeah. his beer, uh, hanging a leg out <laughs> of the side of his Jeep. Like, oh, you can do all of this. I, I have to take things just a little bit slower than you. Yeah. But uh, that, definitely found level. the uh, capability of that, that old canyon. You don't sure. say. Okay, just <laughs> backing up real quick. I just want to throw this out there before we, we keep going. There are 30 cruise diesels for sale on car gurus <laughs> nationwide right now and four, 14 of them have no accidents interesting <laughs> that is that might be that more cruise more diesels fun. than suzuki x90s like that's that's my normal like low volume number 14 <laughs> nationwide <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe with I no accidents. No accidents. <laughs> okay, so that was your adventure in the AT4. Yes. Um, what th- what else have you driven it. recently? That. Oh man, go ahead. Uh, Don't let me well, cut you off. I will say this: I I am still working on. Uh, I have not posted my AT4 off road video yet because we went heavy. I had five camera angles. Oh. At not thinking, oh, okay, wow. I'm gonna have to go back and edit this. So, <laughs> five fixed camera angles, and then my cameraman's free hand. So, like, that it's a beast of an edit. But I will say, my solo review of it is already out, and my impressions of it are don't buy it. And I normally don't <laughs> say that about okay. General Motors products. Uh, but okay, I, I was so, so disheartened with that platform and the nail in the coffin for me was the design of the doors. Every time you grab the hand, the door handle, like that whole panel is loose and it just squeaks and shakes. Mm -hmm. It just felt so cheap inside. And then you add on all the stuff. They've moved everything to the center screen and it just, it, it would have been a beast to live with daily. And I would so, have been dreading the 50k I'd spend on it every day. I I drove one recently as well, and um, very interestingly, one of my best friends who owned for an extended period of time the Chevy Avalanche that I owned prior. So it went from mm-hmm. my dad to me to my brother to <laughs> this friend of mine. Um, he bought a Canyon AT4, and mm-hmm. you know he's diehard GM. Um, you know, he's got a C5 Corvette with more crap on it nice. than I could possibly begin to uh, begin to explain. But yeah, he he likes the AT4. I I felt similarly with what you just voiced. Um, I understand that a lot of the stuff they did is being <coughs> excuse me being explained as simplification and like mm. going into the modern tech age by moving yeah. it all to the touch screen but they're doing it because then they don't have to you know buy buttons and they can yes. have less switch gear and there's you know more that they can just incorporate into software which is ultimately cheaper yeah and, which and there's still that, 5, that was... buttons for the hvac i was like y'all cut yeah. buttons here but not uh i don't know it, it was, yes. See, there are 5 million buttons right there for yep. HVAC. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. That's your picture. <laughs> Good song. Good choice of songs and, and radio yeah. station. That, that's No, Ross, it's to. yours. Oh, that's yeah. mine. Oh, yeah. well, that would explain that. But when did it, I, it, it was like the C8 Corvette in there. Like, everybody complains about that line of buttons in the C8 Corvette. That's exactly what I felt like here. Is they all look the same. What? They're all the same size. Dude. They're shiny black. Like, good luck. The line right of buttons in the Corvette is a fucking liability. <laughs> yeah. Rumor has it that they're about to change it. We'll see. We'll see. But well, they just did E Ray press drive. So, yeah. yeah. Who knows what their development cycle is? My invite must be. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, ditto. Um, and I said good things about the C8. But no, yeah. it's interesting that you say that about the AT4 because. So many of the, you know, the magazines and the outlets and whatnot said good things about it. But I think the difference is kind of in mentality and perspective because 
so much of the way you think about a vehicle is in comparison versus <laughs> in a vacuum. You know, in comparison to the existing current Tacoma, yes, the Canyon is much nicer inside. Yes. Know? Like, yes, when it has better engine and transmission. But if you back up and say, is this $50,000 worth of truck experience? It's like, you get a whole lot of used truck with a V8 and, you know, a uh, yeah. full-size bed for uh, for 50 or 45 So, I don't know. Or I will say, like our buddy Greg just bought that used <clears throat> Titan. I think that Titan was new. Was it new? I think Greg bought a new Titan for like... Oh, man. Either 50 or less. I could be wrong. I gotta tell scroll us. again. <laughs> but I'll find it. Well, I will say that uh, the Canyon came into its own off-road. It really showed that that is where GM invested the money, was its off-road mm-hmm. capability. I, I was thoroughly happy and the entire week was a roller coaster of emotions. I got it. I was excited. I messed around with it and started becoming more and more depressed. The more I explored inside and out of it, <laughs> took it off road. I was yeah. happy again. Brought it back home, and it was squeaky and just cheap feeling again. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. you know, if why it was does a it pre production vehicle? Was it a, well, was it a full production run we truck? We kept joking that it was uh, made on a Friday, and uh, I looked oh, on God. the sticker. It was made on a Thursday, uh, February 23rd. So I don't know. I think they were fully in production by that point. Yeah, that's not good, because that joke kind of goes back to, like, cars from the 60s and 70s. You know? Like, yeah. oh, it's a shitbox. It's a lemon. It was built on a, you know, drunk guy after lunch on a Friday. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's 2023. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, so it impressed you off-road. What uh what else have you driven that impressed you off-road? Or or didn't, or you know, shit the bed off-road. So the shocker of all shockers to me, Maverick Trimmer. Like I I did hmm. not expect that to be as much fun as it was put it in sand mode and it would actually step the tail out for what is a front wheel drive biased all wheel drive system really i had so much fun in that thing it's interesting it's like a little rally car yes yes and (laughs) because it was so small too like yeah there you go Uh, and that's out at barnwell too uh we took that out the same day as the ram trx and Mm -hmm. I oh, intentionally talk about filmed. See, there it is, right there behind it too. Uh, I intentionally filmed the trimmer last because I wanted to have as much fun as I could in the TRX. And mm-hmm. when I got the Maverick, I was like, "Dang, we wasted all that time in the TRX. I could have been in this thing." So it's so um, interesting. It, it was a lot of fun, and uh, for not that much money. So let's see, what's it say? The price is tested. I didn't. Can you scroll down on the text there? I always like do. Low 30s, yeah, probably. 34-ish. 34. Yeah, 34. Yeah, 34K. Which in so, modern monies, I mean, that's a good I value. I would probably have that Maverick trimmer over the AT4. And that's saying something. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm a G guy, and that's a Ford. So. What, kind of, uh, what kind of gas mileage did you see with the Maverick trimmer? Uh, I saw about what it says there on the sticker. I was north of 20. Whereas, again, uh, okay. AT4, I never saw sticker. I never saw 15 in the um, yeah in, in that canyon. I'm driving the GMC Denali 1500 with the 3 liter Duramax right now. And I'm getting better oh, fuel economy the in the engine. jig truck. Than I, oh, I fucking I love, love that engine. Oh. <laughs> I had it in the uh, Trail Boss earlier oh. this year, the Silverado Trail Boss. Yeah. And... Let's see. I road tripped it to Dallas and back, which is a four hours round trip. Uh, drove it through the city, picked my wife up at the airport, you know, did all the things. School pickup line, took it off roading, left it idling a lot and had, mm-hmm. uh, I believe, for my entire loan, 22.7 was my average fuel economy. Dude. I was blown away. What? Okay. A couple of years ago. <laughs> a couple of years ago, my wife and I took a Yukon Denali with that engine to a wedding. Mm. And I mean, we averaged, you know, it's a brick. Once you go over like 75, the fuel economy drops. We averaged probably 
low 80 mile per hour range from Connecticut out to where the wedding was. And over the whole week that I had the truck, when I gave it back to them, the average was like 27. It was yeah, fucking up. crazy. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll try to find a picture. It was I was like, I forget everything else. This is the best engine on sale that nobody knows about. So I just interviewed my friend Tim Esterdahl of Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. That's my best yeah. Tim impression right there. Yeah. And he has a Silverado <laughs> High Country with that engine in it. And my interview with him, which goes up this Friday, uh, he took his 72 Chevy named Swede from Nebraska to uh, the Woodward Dream Cruise. Yep, that's the truck in my driveway right now. Okay. Except I've got, the, I've got the ultimate. So, you know, got the blacked out grill. Oh, uh, yeah. But he took oh, his 72 ultimate. Chevy from Nebraska to the Woodward Dream Cruise in Detroit and back he said he used a gallon of def and apparently there's some known oil issues i i can't remember it all but it has me reconsidering owning something with that engine but then again i don't tow that often so <laughs> for what i would need it for yeah still very intriguing oh, to me. yeah let's see i i said a 62 my... what's that is it is Tim's truck a 62 or a 72? 72. 72. It's got its own Instagram page, Chevy Swede. <laughs> okay. If you're if you're clicking around on that's the easier IG to find. That, yeah. I got 26 over a week with it. So 20 that, that is just that's stupid for what we get in modern day. And like I said, I got at best 146 in that canyon mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. It was another disappointment yeah. of that engine. Like I loved it. It that, is strong. It is V8 strong, but it doesn't sound like a V8, and it drinks like a V8. But, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, because it needs boost to actually get going, and once it gets into boost, I mean, you know, what's the saying? Like, if you're making power, it doesn't matter how you make it. It's the air and yeah. the fuel are going to need to have the same amount to get that same power. So, yeah, yeah it, I, I will say I, being I in four low, mileage that thing stayed in the boost. So that's that's uh, interesting. Street. That's something I never really thought about. Oh, so that's, that's a, a sixty-two cool truck. Mm -hmm. Did I say seventy-two? Yeah, I did say seventy-two, didn't I? Yeah, that's that's, seventy-two. But that's my body. my previous employment at F. Yeah, so well, okay. seventy-two is right before the square body. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, the shirt they started seventy-three. Right is uh from it's my buddy <laughs> yeah is from my buddy over uh vehicle nanny uh his dad was the lead engineer on the original k5 blazer so, that's pretty dude, cool that's awesome yeah that's pretty cool so he gifted me with this shirt it's got his logo on the back but uh i, I wear it uh very lovingly so but yeah so as a gm guy through and through what's your uh what's your What's your dream GM vehicle and your dream GM build? Because there's got SEMA and all the other resto mods and whatnot going on. 1969 Camaro Z28. That is like the end okay. all be all. Holy grail. That's a holy grail. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And okay. they are only getting harder and harder to get a hold of. And, you know, Seriously. I've even been pricing. Unmolested. Yes. Uh, I've. So I had a 45th anniversary uh, SS, which was uh, Gen 5, but I have been very desperately researching uh, the 35th anniversary, which was the last year before the Camaro's first death uh, in 02. Yeah. And those things are ridiculous. Yes, the F body? Yes, the red the one with the silver. Were they silver or white yes. stripes? They were a yes. silver checkered flag. They kind of turned into a yeah, checkered flag yeah. as they went back. I have a poster and, of that in my parents' mm. basement. I, I, because, I like, want one with T-tops like you wouldn't believe, but my wife yeah. has bad high school memories of a, an ex that drove a fourth-gen <laughs> Caro. So that is strictly on the no-flight list in my household. So so, Trans Am. Oh, no. You get a firework with Trans Am. Yeah, when there it is, uh, when GT Garage Shop gets its own garage, that will be there because I, <laughs> I that's love a, that car, dude. Uh, it was 
that generation Camaro that made me fall in love with vehicles in the first place. I don't know how old you are, but growing up, that was like, I mean, I grew up in, you know, a GM and Jeep household. And like, I didn't have Lamborghini posters on my wall. I had fucking Camaro posters, you know, and this was the, this was the car growing up. Oh. So I feel you on this. My brother and I, uh, before we could even drive, we were figuring out how we could save up the 25000 to buy a Camaro SS in 02. And now I'm like, 25000 that's what they cost now. Like, uh, yeah, if right. you're lucky. If you're lucky. A, a uh, mediocre one. A pristine <laughs> one's got to be thirty five or forty. And speaking uh, of Robbie, yeah. you know, we're talking about him. Have you, you seen his? Yeah. Like, you yeah. post it every yes. once in a while. I'm like, dude, I want your car. <laughs> so, Where yeah. Robbie lives, and knowing him, his car is probably about a week away from going into its annual hibernation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, Gotta keep it, off it does get discussed quite a bit on how much he has kept it out of the salt. Yes. Yeah. Diligent so, about that. Yeah. When I was in Detroit, uh, I, I was reminded that it's a whole nother world up there seeing all the rusted out, like the old Ram 1500, the Dodge Ram to show you how old it was. Uh, I was like, how, if the body looks like that, what is the undercare? What is the drive shaft look oh, yeah. like? <laughs> that, that, that thing is <laughs> What's left on the it? road or yeah. the suspension. Like, uh, you're one pothole away from your axle being two miles behind you. Like, uh, I, <laughs> yeah and the perfect image but it's on reddit and so it won't just share regularly it's like it's literally the side of a truck bed that the salt has just oh, ate it's... all the way through the bed like <laughs> it's, can't it's see anything half the trucks around here the top of the fender like around the wheel well is just gone it's yeah it's not great yeah oh it's man not, it's not great. I this one looks like he got shot <laughs> See, I live in in between land where like salt on the roads isn't always until like 10 times a year. As soon as they throw it, I go to a car wash kind of thing. But yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a there's a guy oh. who drives a Nissan hard body around me that looks like that uh, CR X. X that I just yeah. had up there. I almost said CRZ and I was like, that's not CRZ. There's one in my neighborhood, actually. Cool the CRZ. Car. Yeah, they're, they're actually kind of cool. The two person hybrid. Yes, it's a two-seater. It's and they should have just called it Insight, you know. Yes, but Insight Coupe, I think they're or cool. Insight Hatch, I or well, the other one was a hatch. So neither of those work. <laughs> no. I don't like How? One. So I'm I'm curious because you have had experience with the Grand Highlander. Yes, several, and I'm about. I, to I haven't talked to many nothing. people who have. <laughs> So the few times, the two times I've driven one, one was the Hybrid Max. Toyota had me out to Gulf States Toyota, which is like the biggest distributor in the nation down in Houston. And uh, I got to drive it. I got to have the keys and it in my possession for maybe an hour. And that included taking pictures and doing my walk around and stuff like that. So... Uh, I got to drive a part of Houston I've never driven in before. I got lost. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I can say it is a good powertrain. It is a solid option, and my fans love it. Uh, anytime I post something hmm. on Grand Highlander, it does quite well. The one you're showing right now is actually one I had here locally uh, right after that event. That is a limited trim i do believe with the oh you're gonna get me lying two, four, uh, two five four yeah, liter two, four. Uh, so Silver. um not, nothing really yeah <laughs> nothing really special about that one but it was still good like uh for what it needed to be a, a big three row um a vehicle from toyota and i can say because i just posted the video today at the Detroit Auto Show, the last thing I filmed while I was there, I climbed in the third row of 18 different vehicles to compare space oh, God. and amenities. And uh, when I got in the back of the 
this is Toyota's term, the traditional Highlander. Uh, I had to turn sideways and my shoulders were on the second and third row seats. Like I was wedged. There hmm. was no Sounds anything. And they told me when I was at Gulf States that they define three row SUVs in two different classes. A short trip, which is what the traditional Highlander is. So basically bonus mm -hmm. seats. Nobody you wants to survive. ride back there. Yeah. Yeah. You'll make you it. Not happily, there. but There's you'll make it. There's a seatbelt and some leather for you if you right. want it. Um, and then long you'll trip. You'll need the jaws of life to get out of it. But you'll yeah. get there. I practically did. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, then they've got long trip, which is what Sequoia-ish, because uh, it's kind of their off-road, and it's what Grand Highlander is. And mm. what surprised me is Grand Highlander is a better three-row vehicle than Sequoia. It's got more space behind the third row. It's got more space in the third row. Like, yeah, Sequoia is a, a head scratcher to me now. It it, it does not make a lot of sense to Meh. me. Yep. <laughs> what a great still. <laughs> me. <Am> I <laughs> oh my god, the Grand Highlander. That's but funny. Yes, so, uh, I, if you are looking for a usable third row and you must have toyota i would say grand highlander or sienna i am yeah, a big minivan, minivan fan shit they make a lifted all-wheel drive minivan from the factory we had it Get we that. had it for oh, really? a week How woodland was edition yeah How um i still scraped the body <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a quarter uh, inch of lift it's, 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 not it's nothing much. yeah it's i think nothing. it's 0. 0.69 inches or 0. 0.7 inches like it's not yeah it's it's as much of a lift as what Nissan put on the Pathfinder Rock Creek and called it an off-road yeah. vehicle. I'm like, absolutely, okay. oh, man. <laughs> so don't get me yeah. started. On that I mean, one. just just looking at it, it looks huge. No, like not. <laughs> uh, so I will say, having had the platinum trim and then that one, uh, I could tell that it was like visually, I could tell it was lifted, uh, but. Okay. Not much, not much. And when you're comparing the, like three inches of ground clearance versus three point seven, yes, <laughs> you know that point but, seven matters. I mean, for getting mm. you to a campsite, mm -hmm. it, and it's got those rugged uh, all weather floor mats inside, so you know when you're off roading in, in in the deep stuff. There you go. But the the extent as to uh, where I took it off road was down a high line trail, so I really didn't uh, test that one out too much. It, it did not make oh. sense for me to drive an hour one way to take it to uh, Barnwell, so that would have made a great video. I yeah. am sure. How was the fuel economy? It was good. I don't think I got the thirty five that the sticker claimed. I think I was somewhere around thirty two ish. Still pretty um, good. But I can attest to that so we road tripped the Pacifica plug-in hybrid, which is the only plug-in hybrid minivan mm -hmm. on the market. Uh, we right. road tripped that yeah, one proud of. Uh, from Amarillo, Texas to Chicago on Route 66. And for long haul trips, the uh, plug-in hybrid it's basically just a hybrid and it uses the three, six Pinastar instead of the two liter, like the four by E stuff from Jeep. Mm -hmm. And so it was That's thirsty. Weird choice. It, yeah. Yeah. And you also can't like select what mode it's in. Like you can in the four by E mm -hmm. stuff from Jeep. It, it was their first plug-in hybrid that Stellantis yeah. offered. So like they're learning and I'm sure a two liter four by E version is coming. But uh, front wheel drive only, and once you used the all electric range, it, she got kind of thirsty. And we were in the twenties for the most most of that trip. Whereas mm -hmm. Sienna is like, if you look at the window sticker, it's thirty five city, thirty six highway, thirty five combined, and thirty five point five. It gets north of thirty. Uh, I, yeah. I can attest to that. So the PHEV would work great as a commuter vehicle because you could always run around on electricity but if you intend on doing anything long haul get the sienna get the yeah. off-road sienna speaking of woodland. speaking <laughs> of uh of of toyotas and hybrids how does the new tacoma look in person like a nine tenths 
tundra <laughs> like it really does <laughs> there um all right i i have only gotten to see the trd off-road on one uh that they had at the detroit show again my invite mm -hmm. to hawaii got lost in the mail but uh they will have it at the truck rodeo i do believe coming up soon uh, if not to drive, maybe just to gawk at. I, I can guarantee you it will be at the State Fair of Texas uh, because oh, yeah. Toyota is located here now and uh, trucks and State Fair just go together. So I can guarantee you I will see another. Uh, if you don't get one with that massive air dam on the front, I think they look good. Um, yeah. But those base That's models the with thing. the like, Man. six inch air dam <laughs> underneath the chair. Yeah, chin. down here. GM yeah, did yeah. that for a while. The uh, the I, I drive it every day. Second, you Chris, Chris, yeah. And the second gen car <laughs> suburban was like one of the worst offenders. Like the Z seventy one had that, like it was like a freaking splitter, you know. But yeah, yeah, that'll be the first thing that people just take, you know, the socket set and go boop, boop. boop okay, now it looks like a truck. That's just. But I use my grind wheel because it's fun. Yeah, the outside of the taco <laughs> looks like the tundra. The inside looks like the tundra. Uh, mm -hmm. If you like, if you like tundra, you're gonna like taco. Uh, they, they didn't really take any yeah, big they risks broke their own on story. it. Of, yep. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's working for them. I guess they they're the sales leader by a long mile. So it's not. Uh, even close. I, I am interested in Ranger. I am very interested in Ranger. I was okay. uh, with Ford when they unveiled it for the U.S. market, and then they had a ride-along at the Detroit Auto Show, uh, which was my first time behind the wheel. Yep, I think there's Taco. Uh, I was Ranger behind Raptor the wheel. Ranger seems exciting. Yes. Uh, they had exclusively Ranger Raptors at Detroit, and the okay. guy I was riding with was on the engineering team that developed it so he was talking about why they did this why they did that and i am very intrigued i'm very curious because i've been in bronco raptor which had 37s mm -hmm. and like that crazy stance and the fenders and yada, yeah yeah um they did not offer 37s on ranger raptor uh it kind of feels like they went raptor light um with ranger even yeah. though they're on the same platform and Which is, seems like 37s are going to be the you know the first youtuber who buys ones put 37s on it yes guaranteed <laughs> how bad does it rub <laughs> but yes uh, and that was at the launch how many more abuse I, do you want I, okay. I recognize that background quite well so but it, yeah, it definitely the signage on the side yeah, it definitely <laughs> looks so much better than the previous generation. I'd never really cared it it but it was the Australian market, I believe, that they brought over to us. It was the global, yeah. yeah. Global is the international yeah. one. Yeah. So this so, one uh, definitely they were shooting for F one fifty light. Uh they even had some sort of I've got my notes down here somewhere. I can't remember exactly what they called it, but I mean, GM did the same thing with Colorado and Canyon. Toyota's doing yeah. the same thing with Taco. You know, like the Frontier. Well, there is no Titan anymore, so never mind there. But no may she dead. rest in peace. Theoretically, yeah. the new Ram Dakota will look like the 1500. If, if is we that ever still get a thing? That. That's supposed to be a thing. I'd be surprised it's if it wasn't. It's supposed to be, but... Ram has gotten a new CEO in the last year, so things are a changing over in the halls of Stellantis. And yep. we'll see what happens. We got the electric to be. <laughs> Other than the Ranger Raptor, what are you looking forward to driving? Uh, I'm looking forward to putting some uh, highway miles on this uh, Sierra Denali that i'm in now i will say um i just got out of the nissan armada mm -hmm. was blown away by that thing really? it, if nissan had money i would say put all your money in marketing behind that thing because it was really that good <laughs> yeah, like, nissan had it, there were the typical shortcomings 
but uh sure so much better than sequoia naturally aspirated v8 that doesn't have yep. start stop in traffic it's like a 5.8 sold me immediately right? 5.6 v8 5.6 the 5. endurance yeah and uh did not have uh start stop in traffic it was just like good classic mid 2000s old school truck yeah, yeah. and but i love so it. The, that's the new armada which is the patrol around Correct. the world Correct. not the one yes. that was shared with the qx80 the which the yeah. beluga whale guy well the new qx80 so is, the... is also on this platform so yeah now it is but it wasn't yeah. prior right is it a 23 yeah, or a 24 core 23 i think they're rolling into 24 unchanged but um yeah. infinity's already teased the new qx80 so i know we're gonna keep this platform a trucking for a little while uh but I, I was surprised how classically good it was as a big boxy three row and uh, i i would i would consider buying one if i were in the market okay. I, I would not look at yes there it is right there something um, about it reminds me and it could just be like it's honest truckiness of like the gmt 800s it's mm -hmm. just truck you know it's not like overly complicated that's what i joked about I when i had it i was like this oh, really? at i've got the window sticker right here uh 72.9 was how much mine cost i was like this would put escalades to shame 10 years ago um but yeah now we called it the tahoe killer because tahoe's cost 70 plus thousand dollars now it's just ridiculous oh, yeah. vehicle somebody rolled past uh, me in a new z71 then and i was like that's a really nice truck i wish i could even think about affording one of those <laughs> yes it's the little the little girl on instagram for a while that was like every video i watched was like oh looks really nice too bad I can't afford it. Like, that's me in traffic every day. <laughs> that's why I drive it an 11-year-old Chevy Cruze Ego yeah. that gets 40 plus. <laughs> when it comes down Touché. to it, that's all I can afford. <laughs> but okay, so that YouTube else, money. What else are you looking forward yeah. to? <laughs> Hold a minute. Pour some pennies on the floor and say I'm rich, you guys. Yeah, yeah so... That's what I've been driving lately. Uh, as far as what I've got coming up on the schedule, I don't exactly know. Uh, I, I've got the, like I said, the Texas Auto Riders Truck Rodeo coming up with a handful of vehicles. Um, Hyundai's invited me out to drive the new Kona. So I'm excited to get behind the wheel of that cute little uh, crossover. See Those what things. that thing is capable. Hopefully they've got the in uh, there or the in line. I don't think they've officially announced the in yet but i want to get in i've heard there is a gmc canyon at4x in the fleet and for about five grand more than the at4 i was just in might change my mm -hmm. opinion on some things <laughs> because extra inch of lift wider track dssv dampers actual mm -hmm. skid plates not plastic ones yep. that I may have scuffed. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Okay, give me more. Cool. <laughs> yeah, keep us posted on how that goes. If uh, if you do yeah. have seat time. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, just being happy with whatever shows up. <laughs> Too <laughs> much. Ain't that the truth? The X actually gets all the. The side protection, right? Yeah, it yes. gets the so it's the equivalent of the ZR2 uh, in the Colorado world. So nice. And then you could get the gosh, I don't even know what they're calling it. I know Chevy calls there's the ZR2 Bison, but what is the AEV package in the? Ooh. Uh, I think they just call it the AT4 AEV. Oh, that, yeah. that's a terrible name. That can't oh, be what they're calling. Yeah. It. <laughs> is well, that on the, the 1500 Sierra is Sierra 1500 AT4X AEV edition. Yeah, they they need to work on that. But <laughs> talk about uh, good branding. AEV is got it down. They're doing the GM stuff. They're doing the Jeep stuff. They've done well yeah. for themselves. 
And I, Canyon is the exact same naming structure. <laughs> I, I have been happy with every AEV branded something I've been in. Uh, I was in the Rubicon uh, 4xE AEV anniversary edition, or anniversary. whatever it was. Yeah. Is that the blue one? Yes. And uh, to say that that is a legit Bronco Raptor competitor, same amount of torque uh, and practically mm-hmm. all the same mods, but live front axle and more rugged. Uh, I don't know. It yeah. just it felt more right in that one. So see that? Yeah, that one. I'd buy that one. Well, no, yeah. so no, this I wouldn't because is... scroll, scroll up on the price on that one. <laughs> I was just like, uh, yeah, ninety-seven thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yep, ninety-seven grand. I'd have it. Three ninety-two. <laughs> yes. It it oh, was God, one God. that I re- I got in more than once while I was at Mama. <laughs> like that's how I knew if I liked him or not. <laughs> it was good. It was really good. God. I I do like the four by e platform. I, I've joked. I would buy a four by E. I would be gifted. I would gladly receive a three ninety two, uh, but I, I yeah. would buy a four by E of the two if I had to live with them daily. I've also joked that the three ninety two is the modern Texas sports car because it goes fast in a straight line. It's a convertible. Uh, it could be a truck. It could be anything you need it to be, all at once. And. Uh, Yes. Maybe that's why I love it. Yes. And maybe that's why I love it so much. Aside from being fuel efficient, yeah, it could it it does it all. (laughs) I got nine over the week. (laughs) Well that's so in in practical terms, friend of the show Sean Holman has a three ninety two that he's built out to be his overland camping rig. And that's his biggest issue, his fuel autonomy now. That in his like uh, exhaust tips kept getting bashed by rocks. He fixed um, that, but I think he he's, fixed. I think he fixed that part of it. But gas matters when you're in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Make some, unless you uh, want to take somebody's twenty gun. jerry cans with you. So yeah, he he is he has exter- external cans now. <laughs> somebody's got to talk. Multiple <laughs> I'm supplemental sure. auxiliary <laughs> tank for the Wrangler at this point. <laughs> I mean, shit, if, if they don't are... do it now, it, it's definitely in the engineering stages. Like it's coming. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, so, sweet. Cool. It's pretty late on the East Coast for Ross. Yep. Are you doing all right there, bud? Uh, it's <laughs> it's been a long day. Today was a long one. Yeah, me too. Oh God. Uh, I'll wrap up the show real quick, real fast. Real you can quick. rate review us wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm going to talk like Tom Holland the rest of the show. I'm going to say quacksand instead of croissant. Like, no, I'm not. That's not. I don't do accents. That is. No accents, no impressions. We are not. Yeah. Nope. Not that guy. Not that guy. I I can do a tree. I just stand up and spread my arms out. That's the only impression I got. Like, that's tall, skinny tree. Uh, I don't know, I don't know my, that. that's fucking funny no, my, my wife the other day or this is a long time ago but she was at church with the, the now third grader and they were he was doing his first communion stuff and she was like alright make the sign of the cross which is normally like top of your head bottom left right and he went <laughs> <laughs> for the audio oh, sorry, I made a T with my fingers hey. <laughs> I was like the I mean, sign of the cross it counts like yeah, yeah, book it uh, dear Pope, we're changing That's things. Funny. Um, anyway, That's funny. <laughs> rate review wherever you listen to podcasts. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. Be sure to follow GT Garage Talk on YouTube. Uh, and then you got that everywhere. Like every social is GT Garage Talk. Well you did a really good job of that. SEO winning. <laughs> that was and, and, uh, one of the reasons we're called GT Garage Talk is some garage talks were already taken. So <laughs> I, yeah. I went in there and stole them all. Uh, as soon as I could <laughs> lock that up. I may, I may have created a new Instagram and bought a new domain the other day. So <laughs> I haven't, it's a side project, Ross. It's, it's all related. So. Tell me offline. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, follow Hooniverse on Instagram, the real Hooniverse. Ross is no, not like the one from friends. I'm at overlanding dad and we did a show. Thank you, Corey. Oh, thanks Corey. Thank you. Yeah. Anytime. Mm-hmm.